beautiful souls. I hope you're well. Today, we have the great pleasure to have with us our dear friend, Desiree Sanchez, who is a, a therapist or healer. I don't know how she wants to be called. I know Quentin said he was a he was a therapist and not a healer. So I don't know if you, you know, prefer one or the other in terms of uh, which term you use, uh, but energetic uh, healer or therapist. Uh, and uh, your practice is called a healing guide in the garden. So before I give you the opportunity to present yourself and talk to, to us about who you are and what you do, I just want to reiterate that uh, the topic of today is, uh, again, um, focused on going within, receiving guidance, how we receive guidance, may it be inner guidance or outer guidance, and how we can learn to trust this guidance we receive, this information. I think it's a really important topic these days where, you know, a lot of people are going more and more within and trying to find their, their own answers within. And I think it's it's wonderful, but sometimes we are left with uh, some questions, some doubts uh, within us. And I think it's uh, crucial for us to sometimes hear about the feedback of other people, how they do that. And this way we can not necessarily compare ourselves, but just see other ways in which it can be done. And 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 this way, perhaps trust a little bit more the information we do get uh, from within or from our outer guidance. So uh, again, in today, uh, as we did a little bit with uh, Quentin Nagios, which we sort of had a conversation with last time, uh, your, your, um, how can I say your perspective as a therapist will be very much interesting uh, to see how you also guide uh, your own clients and and in in this uh, in this practice of going within and trying to find your answers. So, without further ado, my dear Desiree, if you would like to just talk a little bit more about um, who you are, what you do, and uh, yeah, <laughs> welcome. Well, thank you so much for having me. Um, yes, uh, I. I'm an energy healing practitioner. What I do is I guide people through their own healing. Um, I don't necessarily heal anyone because we all have that divine um, ability to do that within ourselves. We just have to remember and be guided through those steps of getting into um, all layers of our bodies and so I concentrate on the energetic layer of our body, our spiritual body. And what we do is we go through and release traumas that have been, um, that have events that have happened within our lifetimes that uh, we hold energy and we hold them in certain parts of our bodies and that can cause disease and pain and, um, all kinds of different ailments. So when we go through the whole procedure, we're going through the different events. Typically they start as ch children, um, childhood traumas. And during our childhood, we, uh, from the age of, of actually before birth till the age of seven, we are literally in a theta stage. A, an imagination stage of what we are going to perceive this world to be. So should something go wrong in between those ages, we're almost programming those negative events to prolong and kind of stay with us. So we really dig deep in there and um, I help guide people to, to get down to those events and release and understand why they've happened and so it, it's it's a very in-depth process um, but this can relieve tons of uh, physical um, ailments and uh, mental disabilities that that we've created from these events so it's it's a it's a guided process and it's so hard to do all by yourself and you know we're constantly going through different things in life so we're never done healing we're never done we're but when we have the tools and we have the conscious ability to be able to understand um, different events that happen for us and not to us um, we can then transmute and change almost like a, a dream, almost like we're living in a dream and you have those 
lucid dreams where you can kind of understand because you're like, okay, well, this is a dream. So let me manipulate it. Once you're able to do that consciously in this world, in this realm or whatever we're in, uh, we're then able to understand and change and manifest within this, our life. So that's, that's kind of how, um, I, I guide and, and we go through different steps of, um, energetic hygiene, understanding that we are energetic beings, um, clearing and cleansing our home, our body, our aura, understanding, um, that that is our bodies that we take beyond this realm when we pass on into the next. Uh, so we really have to make sure to take care of that body. Um, so, you know, there's, there's a whole different process, but I guide through that process and it's, it's about a three week process, but it, it can really help and change people's lives. And, um, so, so far so good. I, I just started my practice about a, a six months ago and I've worked with several clients that have had, um, wonderful results, but it, it, it's all within the client that needs, they need to take those tools and understanding and work with them daily and understand nothing's going to change overnight, but it will become easier as you go on, as you're faced with different challenges. So it's, it's been amazing. Thank you for sharing that. I had the uh, great opportunity and, and honor of, uh, being uh, you know well, having going through the process with you uh this autumn this uh, yeah this this fall and i have to say that it has been an amazing uh journey for me uh because you know i like you have been on the spiritual journey for as long as i can remember as a child of let's say as a teenager uh, on and um you know I've, I've done some work on myself and i say this in all humility but you know sometimes when someone else brings a uh, his or her own perspective or tools to uh, to uh, the fact of healing ourselves, like you said, and I really want to um, just touch on that as a second, because it resonates also with what Quentin said about the importance of remembering that uh, we heal ourselves rather than being healed by a therapist or a healer. And that's really something that um, I think is absolutely crucial because it gives us back our sovereignty in this process. So that's really, really essential. But I just want to say that, um, you know, you have really helped. (laughs) I'm sorry, I still have a bit of a cough. (laughs) You have really helped um, you know, discover parts of myself that even after a long uh, journey, I still had not uh, touched upon. So having someone from the exterior to bring these tools are really, is really special. And you have a, an amazing tools to uh, guide and, and mentor or help the people you're, you're helping. So it's, it's really wonderful. I just want to say that I, 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 I speak of this in from, from experience, you know, I've really, really uh, received a lot from your healing. So yeah, Wonderful. thank you so much. I want to just um, touch up upon something that is really also important that you talked about, which is the energy hygiene. Um, I think that in the process of going within and trying to be in contact with ourselves, um, we were talking about that again with uh, Quentin last time, but with you as well, that the importance of healing our emotions, healing our past traumas, which is obviously absolutely quintessential to Uh, being able to receive information that's less uh, muddled by all these past things. But uh, cultivating an an energetic hygiene, I think, is absolutely essential as well. And uh, I think, uh, um, again, it helps us uh, to have perhaps a more pure contact with ourselves, with our inner guidance or with outer guidance that we trust and that are of high vibration. Uh, Would you care to talk a little bit more about energetic hygiene and what you recommend to your clients or for yourself in order to help people uh, not only to heal, but also in this process of trying to find answers within? Right. Um, Because we are energetic beings in this physical body, um, we have many interferences here on this planet. Um, I am clear sentience I can feel energy I can feel it everywhere it's it uh recently came up in uh, 2019 um after being sick it it was almost like a a, the next day I 
my whole world changed. I could feel it everywhere. Um, but understanding that I, I realized, okay, um, there, there are many interferences here. There are electromagnetic frequencies that are being um, projected from our Wi-Fi, our cell phones, um, our televisions that interact with the frequency within our bodies that can, you know, make us feel sick, ill, um, headaches, uh, especially those little iPod things that you put in your ears. A lot of people suffer from migraines, not realizing that, you know, all of these things are, are producing a frequency that may not be in alignment with our own. They can throw us off. Um, there are also solar radiations that are coming down that are helping upgrade us, but also can affect us by keeping us ungrounded, making us feel dizzy, sick, um, lethargic, just completely throwing us off balance. Um, and also frequency from music and um, people around us that may not be having a great day or, yeah you know, just have some negative energy that, that everything can affect us. So when we are able to put a type of a, a protection around us, an etheric protection, um, we literally can protect ourselves from those collective consciousness thoughts um, that, that could embed within us as well. Uh, so we, we definitely go through a process of, um, protecting our auric field mm -hmm. and producing a, you know, a mantra within ourselves to, to, uh, have that reinforced. So when we're going out, uh, to the grocery store, to carnival somewhere, um, sometimes people can't even be around other people because it affects them so much, which was me. Um, until I learned how to energetically protect myself. Now I can go anywhere and I'm like, I'm, I'm good because I know um, I have put that protection around myself um, using my thoughts, you know, the mental aspect and my emotional aspects, you know, literally. Um, so I, I guide and, and give a better understanding of how you can do that. And it has helped so many people. Mm -hmm. Because we are so sensitive, um, especially people with anxiety, anxiousness. I dealt with that for a very long time, not understanding what it was. Yeah. Um, it's emotions that are just too uh, overwhelmed. They're overwhelmed. So we don't know how to regulate those emotions. And you go into um, a mental, uh, almost like a... An overload of some of sorts. Yeah, pretty much. Pretty much so. Um, understanding all that and and going through a a process, a daily process of protection, um, it, it really can change your life and help you and you know ground you a whole lot better. Yeah, so, absolutely. and that's why releasing a lot of those traumas um, and getting those out of your energetic centers, you're able to then ground yourself better um, yeah. into this earth. Because otherwise, we're constantly leaving our body. Mm -hmm. And that's why you're like so scattered, not really understanding what's really happening. So foggy headed. Yeah. Um, we're, we're not grounding ourselves into our physical body. We're constantly leaving. So and coming back into your body too quickly can also throw off those energetic centers and cause you to be ill, mm -hmm. cause you to get sick very often. So, um, yeah, it, it's, it's very important that energetic, um, clearing that cleaning, uh, and then saging your home as well, because mm -hmm. you have a lot of stagnant energy yeah. moving your home around clearing and cleansing your home. I, I give different tips on how to do that as well, because it's mm -hmm. very important. Okay. That's wonderful. Um, I wish to um, go a little bit uh, further into the topic of um, going within in the sense, because I, I would like to, because all of what you're saying right now is completely related to this topic, but I want to 
um, focus it on, on, you know, your approach, your personal approach um, going within, maybe for your practice uh, with your clients or for yourself as a, as a spiritual being and as, as a person. And uh, so it, it kind of dovetails into what you're saying, because obviously to do what you're doing, you need to, you know, go into this energetic hygiene and grounding and, and healing. And so perhaps you can talk a little bit more about, um, in a very, very practical terms, the different um, tools or, you know, manners or ways in which you ground and, and, and you have your own energetic hygiene and perhaps uh, dovetailing to, you know, how you go within and, and, and perhaps hear your own answers or information, either inner or outer, uh, to either help your clients or for yourself. So if you want to take a little right. bit more about that. Um, it took me a while to be able to ground myself. I had to go through um, many healings with my mentor that um, I'll speak of her in a little while mm -hmm. uh, to to ground um, because I was leaving my body very often and not able to get those answers. Um, but what I started doing was, you know, basically placing my feet on the ground, literally, and trying to, you know, uh, retrieve uh, the energy from the sun mm -hmm. because the sun is, is, is such a beautiful tool that we use and we need on a daily basis. Um, so grounding, uh, I started there just basic grounding and then I started feeling the energy from the trees mm -hmm. and I would sit by a tree and feel the consciousness from that tree. Um, I had to do a lot of clearing before I could, could get that done because I didn't trust anything. My ego, my subconscious mind was telling me, oh, that's not real. That's, you know, um, but going within, I was able to take a course with my mentor and she gave me certain tools on how to, to hear the messages I was receiving and to trust what I was hearing. Um, I, it, that was kind of hard for me to do because I didn't trust myself. Mm -hmm. I had to do a lot of clearing before I did that. So going through the whole healing um, regiment that we, we do here with my, my practice, I I've done it with my mentor. She taught me everything I, I I'm doing here mm -hmm. and I was able to start hearing the messages that I need. And she started with um, channeling angels and I wasn't too comfortable with that. Um, I was raised Catholic and uh, there was a lot of dogma um, and an inner, inner knowing of, of not, trusting all of the information that I was given because a lot of it has been manipulated. Um, so it was hard for me to do that, but I was receiving the message to contact my higher self and all of us have that ability. That's why it's so, so important to clear those traumas. So you're able to get those clear messages from your higher self and the the one thing that we are all suffering from is that divine connection. Mm -hmm. The that lack of it. <laughs> or the, yeah. The, the lack of it. And that's pretty much where our ascension process starts is trying to connect with our divine consciousness, where we all come from. We're all from it. Um, once you are able to create that cord that we all have, but be able to receive information from it. You're able to literally get the answers you need on a daily basis through many, many signs of synchronicities, mm -hmm. through numbers, through um, basically picking up your phone and seeing a video that just pops up with the message that you needed or the information that you needed. Um, being consciously aware of in the now moment and you literally start to receive this information, trusting it. If you are getting information like, oh, that's stupid, or oh, no, that's not going to work. You can kind of understand that that's your ego, your subconscious working in there. Yeah. 
you have information that's coming through that literally resonates, you get those goosebumps. Your physical body is reacting to the mental information that you're receiving. Um, you can pretty much know. And once you're that clear vessel, you're released from a lot of those traumas. You're able to understand a whole lot better from, from what you're getting and trust it. Mm -hmm. And then you're able to manifest through thought, through your mental abilities, your emotional side um, of, of what you, you want to live out. You want to, um, you know, you're, you, you don't want to sit there in anxiety anymore so you're you're able to then say okay well i take my power back there's two frequencies i realize that that we live in on this planet there's love and there's fear us as human beings are created of love that divine source that frequency is pure love so when we are out of alignment we are fearing we are fearing the past and we are fearing the future so once we can get into that now moment of trust, trust in ourselves, in our higher guidance, we are then able to perceive uh, the information we need and be guided through ourselves and not anyone else. Yeah. And that's not always easy, as we said before, to um, yeah trust ourselves rather than the exterior sources, right. because we were programmed to do that, uh, obviously. I really love... Um, Every time I, I listen to you, Desiree, I, I, I love how you just, everything just flows through you. Uh, you know, sometimes I, I wonder if it's a form of channeling slash, you know, flowing of information because you have such a poised and calm and high vibration way of sharing, you know, what you have to share with us. It just flows and it, it's beautiful. I I feel so at peace and calm when I when I um, hear you talk. It's always, and I, I'm sure you. people listening to this video will also feel that very amethyst-like vibration I feel from you. It's a, it's a, you. It's a be beautiful energy. Um, you have talked about the different, very precise ways in which we can ground, like you said, but also in which we can receive information. May it be through music, synchronicity, uh, a video we find, and... And I would be really interested to see, again, in a very um, concrete and grounded way, if you can talk a little bit more about the actual physical process, or doesn't have to be physical, but you know what I mean, like the actual steps or processes in which you 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 go, either when you, you try to connect with your higher self or yourself or a client, would you care to just give us a little bit more like sure. details, like your your process or your um, sure. the different steps you use and how you receive information? Do you feel like it's words, telepathic information? You know, just to give us a little bit more details. This way people can see how, if it's something they resonate with or it's different for them or, or complementary. Or... Right. Um, well, every morning I have a, a spiritual um, protection declaration that I go through. And it is... You know, I, I can modify it per client for, for what they need. Um, but I basically go through um, grounding. Mm -hmm. um, I can kind of take you through it now if you'd like. It would be wonderful uh, if I what can... I do. Yes. yes. Um, it would be very beneficial for people who are listening. And they can adapt it again, like you say, to change the words. if they... Right. And uh, but, you know, yeah, that'd be lovely. <laughs> right. I, I learned this through my mentor. Um, she takes us through many different declarations. Um, but the declaration I go through is basically uh, claiming my sovereignty as a spiritual light being, uh, grounding myself into the center of the earth and into the center of the universe, creating a divine pillar of pure white light clearing and cleansing all of my chakras, putting all of my layers of my bodies into perfect alignment, and then shielding myself with a triple shield of protection with a high frequency shield of divine source light. Um, and I go through and give gratitude for everything I have, um, claiming I am love, I am light, I am strength, I am wisdom, I am health, I am abundance, and claiming this all to be true and sealing it with love and light, um, calling in my spiritual light team, my guides, my angels, my guardians, 
that I have around me um, for just reinforcement and uh, doing this every day. Uh, when I don't do this, I can feel it. My energy's off. I don't feel the same. I don't, uh, it almost lets a different uh, energetic frequencies and energetic interferences uh, come in and instantly I tell myself, okay, let's, we're going to do this and, and clear and cleanse all of that. So I am a pure source of, and of, of light. Um, but when, when I do that, I completely, I can completely feel it within my whole being. Um, the energy is cleared and cleansed. And I claim that my subconscious can hear that because my subconscious can hear everything. I am in control of that. I'm in control of my body, of my physical uh, organs, my cells, everything, claiming sovereignty over it all. Um, so when we do that, we then put ourselves in control of the rest of our day, of our manifestations, of our thoughts, of our creations for that day. Um, and I also do it at night. So, you know, at night we go to sleep and our etheric bodies take over going into different realms unbeknownst to us. Sometimes we remember, sometimes we don't. Um, and those are divine protections that we have to have as well. Um, but going within and getting the information, I can literally just, uh, claim it. And I call in my guides. Um, I like to just say my spiritual light team of ancestors of, um, my mother that has passed. I know she is one of my guides. Uh, claiming that to come in and I channel into my higher self. I do not have anything exterior of me because nothing is above me and nothing besides source, besides our divine creation. Um, I, I don't like to give anything else power because there are, yes, there's other beautiful entities out there, but they are just on a different dimensional level of consciousness not meaning that they are above or below um so i directly get that inner knowing that uh that information just by having a clear mind being in the now moment having nothing exterior of me interfering within my thought process um and it just comes in um when I started doing it, I was able to down, write, um, I was able to create my own website. Never would I ever have thought I would have been able to do that. Um, but there's so many abilities that you then are able to pull down and get um, almost like, uh, I guess they call them downloads mm -hmm. in a sense, um, to be able to do that. And it's pure knowledge that we all have within ourselves we have that connection we need to find that so we are not lost in this realm of whatever it is the simulation this beautiful uh learning path some people say this is a prison planet i would beg to differ mm -hmm. because it's the level of consciousness that you're in there's a hell consciousness and there's a heaven consciousness. When we raise out of those fear vibrations, we are then able to go into that elevated consciousness of living and being, being able to perceive that tree, the bird in the tree, understanding what love and beauty and how much divine creation is here on this planet. Yeah. So when we start to change our, our outlook and get all of the negative traumatic experiences out of us, we're then able to have so much love and compassion for everyone around us, realizing we are all divinely connected just on our own journeys and experiences sharing this beautiful planet. But yeah, it, it's, it, it's a process and uh, it takes a lot of trust, a lot of work but we all have the ability to do it yeah i love what you um 
not only what you say, which resonates, of course, very much, but uh, what really strikes me about uh, everything that you are and what you say also is always that notion of um, I've, every time you talk, Desiree, and not just on camera, but off camera as well as a, just is there's always that respect for um, other beings, other sources of um, information or I, I never felt from you any judgment. That doesn't mean you don't, you know, have them. We all have judgments within yeah. sometimes. But uh, once one thing that always strikes me with the way you you interact in the world is this way of uh, always seeing people as um, another level of consciousness, no better, no worse, rather than, you know, uh, having this comparison uh, tendency that often ego, human ego has to, you know, those are normies, those are sheeples, you know, all, all these sometimes degrading things we can say, or on the contrary, to admi admire people and put them on a pedestal. And what I really love about you and your approach in general is that you always keep a sovereign. Your sovereignty can re really be felt. We, we really feel that you are um, in control of who you are and that you, um, that doesn't mean you don't welcome things outside or whatever but what I'm saying is that you're always grounded into this this sovereignty of yours and it, it's something we can really feel when we hear you when you hear you speak and I think that's something that you also inspire in other people when you exchange with them or perhaps with your clients and uh, it's something I really learned a lot from you of trying to always remain you know um, in open-mindedness but also in respect of every life form and not uh, judging people for their journey, the journey they're on. And that goes also for this planet when we have a lot of people out there saying, you know, like you say, we're on a prison planet, we're on the matrix, we are, we need to disclose because this planet is, you know, horrible, what happened. And you have always this energy you bring of very high vibration where you, you always sort of, um, uh, bring a view of things which is more about no this is an opportunity to heal this is an opportunity to grow this is an, an opportunity to evolve and as uh, Quentin was saying also last time it's not about ascending it's about evolving it's about growing and you you always bring that that aspect back into a conversation and I think that's absolutely crucial and I think it would benefit us all to try to do that a little bit more sometimes in, in the way we converse with people to just forget the the whole judgmental thing because it's mm -hmm. it's common we have a a lot of that uh happening sometimes in our way of thinking and it's just it's human but uh yeah that's the thing it's it's so hard at being human yeah you know we have all these subconscious programmings that we're not even aware of yeah you know that that protection of oh look at how different they are oh they're doing that wrong oh i'm right you're mm -hmm. it it, it takes a lot, again, of that releasing that trauma. And this is trauma even from past lives. This is trauma you are holding from your parents, mm -hmm. their parents. These are ancestral things that we hold within our Akashic or our DNA cellular memory yeah. within ourselves. So we can change these things and we can understand. And there's so much knowledge coming out. There's so many esoteric knowledge and theosophical knowledge. I mean, there's so much coming out that we can we can listen to and we can pinpoint certain things that resonate. Again, feeling those goosebumps, feeling that inner knowing of, oh, yeah, that makes sense. Well, it makes sense for a reason. Um, so understanding, getting those key little things. Everyone, you know, they say they have their truth, but there's many truths in everything. Mm -hmm. There's many truths in the manipulated religions and the, the mani manipulated teachings. There's truth in everything. We just have to find what resonates within ourselves, clearing those traumas, those egotistical um, judgments of others, you know, taking, it, it's a whole level of consciousness that we have to get to. And it, it, takes again the clearing clearing out um you can better understand your friends your family and give them gratitude for their part they've had in their role of your life here on earth so it it, it takes a lot of work it wasn't easy it wasn't easy i mean i was the one you know saying oh well, why are they wearing masks 
This is so dumb. Um, but again, it's the fear consciousness that they're living out. It's their it, journey that they get to live out that, you know, and understanding everyone's journey. So, um, Desiree, I just want to address what you what you say about, you know, we all have a different experience and we all have a different uh, perception of reality. And that's also important. Some and It's important to not only accept that within ourselves, but in, you know, respect that in everybody's journey in life and again, not being judgmental. But uh, just for the fun of it, um, because we addressed this, up, this topic uh, with the Quentin last time, and I thought it was really interesting. And I think it, there's something really interesting we could talk about here. It was a question of the shadow, um, because um, a lot of your approach is, is extremely um, vibrant with light, and it's it's full of light. And, you know, I, I just want to, I, I want people also to see what what's your feeling about the shadow and how to yeah. treat the shadow and how to reconciliate with that this way we don't get you know people don't get the impression that it's just like oh love and light and you know because there's a lot of that in the you know spiritual movement and the, so how can you yeah. address that, that question of the shadow because I'm sure it's really important in your work as well and for yourself oh yeah the shadow is what created me the shadow was the darkness that I had to go through Um, I dealt with a lot of anxiety and depression, um, going through a few different childhood traumas, um, and then going through a lot of darkness, not understanding why I was going through those deep, dark, negative feelings throughout most of my life. Um, the shadow is the darkness where creation is made. And we look at the shadow as a negative thing which it can feel that way uh, once we, when we don't understand it. But when we understand the shadow is really created by the subconscious, it's a part of us that once we understand what's held there, we, we can then put light on it and heal it. Yeah. So yes, we're always going to have that, ego that is connected to the shadow that's telling us "Mm, you're bad you're wrong oh this doesn't feel good um and you can't change it um so going deep into the the shadow side of the traumas that we've we've had to live through um and healing those different traumatic events of what has created triggers within ourselves um ptsd uh fight flight fawn and freeze events that and the those anxieties of of making you stay away from people because you see them as bad uh so the shadow can have a lot of control over us and um you know once we understand that we integrate it it's about leveling out the light and the dark within ourselves um not necessarily getting rid of it because it's kind of a a protection mechanism for us. It's what keeps us getting eaten from the lion. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Um, In this beautiful garden, Mm -hmm. but uh, the shadow is is nothing to fear. It's something to understand. So yeah, there's a lot of new age movements out there where, yeah, it's all love and light and all this. Yeah. Well, you have to go through the trauma and clear it first. And then you can have that beautiful love and light. But there's a lot of um, so-called healers out there where you can see there's a lot of trauma that is left undisturbed and they're working through that with people. And so you really have to discern the information you're getting from a lot of people um, because they could be spreading negative information or information that's not necessarily true. So once you start to feel that within yourself, you're able to then discern and say, Oh, okay, that resonates with me. I'll, I'll take that little bit and understand. And then there's other little bits that you may say, no, that, that doesn't, I don't feel that. And then you can take and, and leave. Um, so, yeah, I mean, the shadow is a part of us. Integrating it, understanding it is the most important part. 
Otherwise, we are stuck there and we are feeling it. And so it's a lot of work. And we make uh, people suffer <laughs> from projecting our own shadow on others. And oh, yeah. that, that often happens. And that's what also creates a lot of negative negativity in our reality. And again, an opportunity to grow, but an opportunity to heal, for sure. <laughs> Definitely. Definitely. Just, I'd like to rebound on the question of uh, not sovereignty, which, yeah, it's part of it, but mostly the question of discernment, uh, because it touches upon, again, that subject of receiving information and trusting it, and, but also goes a little bit wider in terms of, you know, um, um, trusting the information that we do get from outside sources sometimes. Um, and why, how would you say is your grounded, you know, very practical way of um, discerning information? Do you, is it just through the emotion? How, how do you deal with the, that, that process? It's the resonance and the frequency because I can feel it. Um, I can feel when someone is fear perceiving or, or projecting their fear out. Mm -hmm. If they are, um, you know, some type of informer stating, oh, well, there might be food shortages and, oh, we need to worry about this or that. Um, that's not necessarily true. We are literally creating our life as we are in this now moment. So you're not guaranteed. I mean, we are literally switching timelines with our frequency so you are in this negative frequency or negative feeling of oh no there's going to be shortages in the store or because you know this one person said that you're going to create that that's literally how manifestation of thought is created and especially by that emotion of fear so understanding that we have control of your consciousness you rise your vibration out of that fear and say no that is not my timeline that is not my creation and that's not how I am going to live I am going to have plenty I'm going to have what I need for my family and you create a whole different vibrational timeline we are all interacting in different timelines mm -hmm. many multiple that's how I feel other people don't feel the same way that's fine that is their reality doesn't make it wrong mm -hmm. it's just how they perceive this reality for them mm -hmm. that is their existence so we have the opportunity again to manipulate this life as if it is a dream mm -hmm. and we have that control we are our own med beds mm -hmm. we can fix our own bodies we have to remember we have to uh, remember the divine within ourselves because it lives there within us all. It's the shadow that keeps it veiled. So once lifting that shadow, the trauma, the veil, we can then go in and get our power back. There's nothing outside of us that is going to save us but ourselves. That's a very important statement right now, especially in these moments of uh, transition when we are often uh, depending on other people, other sources of information, may it be from, you know, psychic information or whatever type of information, but also savior complex of, you know, having people there to save us on all levels. Uh, we have to be, uh, again, to remind ourselves that we are fractals of source, as we always say, and that we are, we have all the potential and we have, we're machines of manifestation. If we, like you say, we are not uh, interfered with, with our own trauma and stuff. So, you know, being those, those, those manifesting machines, you know, we, it just depends on us to, to create that 5D reality. We talk about a lot in, you know, spiritual world. It's all about just choosing, making the choice, the conscious choice and the presence choice of, you know, um, manifesting what, what it is we want on the highest vibration possible. And anybody can do it. And it's not a place. It's a it's a state of being, I guess. It, would you say right. it that way as well? Or? Exactly. Exactly. Because we're not going anywhere. It's <laughs> that vibrational frequency that we match, that we can all interact in and again yes. it doesn't mean we have to you know leave 
our parent because they are so <laughs> narcissistically inclined to just be so negative. Um, it means we can still interact with them. We just, you know, protect ourselves, shield ourselves, and, and not let the negative energy absorb back into us. So we have to feel it. Yeah. We shouldn't have to feel that. Um, but we are in control of everything. We are not the person that you think made you mad. It was how you reacted to that person. Yeah. So nobody has control over you but yourself. And when we start taking credit for that, then we have a better understanding of how we have full control of everything, and positive does, and negative. And it does give us back our sovereignty again, which is absolutely crucial because you're not a victim. Nobody's victim. No situation's right. victim. And right. we often forget it or, you know, we're tempted when we go through difficult times or we encounter challenges to blame it on those in life and this prison planet. And um, yeah. again, like you say, it's always our our response to to elements, to reality, that our own reality that we made, actually. It's our own hologram, basically, that um, that's going to create, you know, more of that reality or not. Um I'd just like to ask you a little bit more about trusting, trusting your information, trusting when you receive, like, can you talk a little bit more about your own personal process of how, well, you, you said it's it's about emotioning, trusting, trusting the emotion, for example. But um, I think it's a topic that uh, we, we didn't talk enough with Quentin. And I, and I, and I think I, I really think it's important that we go back to it. And uh, I, I really want to, you know, um, Uh, put some more emphasis on that topic in our discussion today you and me because uh, I think it's really where um, people feel challenges with the information they receive because when they're able to actually get some information you know with just some grounding and it can happen quite easily it's the trusting part that's difficult so again if you can talk a little bit more about that or what you sure like to share. It, it actually stems from a lot of self-discovery um, that journey of going through the depths of who you are, what created you, why you have certain thoughts, um, and, and starting there. Um, I know I started with, you know, one day waking up and saying, where am I? What is this? I, I, it was almost like I was in a whole different world and I did not understand anything. Um, So I was in such a, a ball of confusion saying, oh my gosh, nothing is real. You know, even going to the point of throwing away my Bible. Mm -hmm. And that, that was so cringe for me because the Bible has a lot of truth in it. It's just misunderstood mm -hmm. um, and manipulated. So yeah. how do we trust that? How do we trust that? Um, going through, you know, different... Um, a dark night of the soul for myself, mm -hmm. not knowing who I was, why, why I was here. Um, that was very scary. And so the trust factor had to come through a lot of, of, okay, well, I'm, you know, born here on earth, our birth, we become earth, um, different elements of, of who I am. I'm an earth sign. I am grounded, um, but there's other aspects that you kind of have to pull together to kind of trust that you are in control and your consciousness. Okay, why am I, you know, why was I so, um, why did I go through the different events in my life and what did I learn from them? And how can I trust that I have the answers to go on and be a good mother, be a good daughter, be, you know, um, trusting really comes from your soul, that divine connection. And it's so hard to even say how to trust because it comes from the depths of your soul, that connection that we lost, mm -hmm. that not necessarily lost, but forgot and didn't remember how to hone into it. It's that veil again, that we 
were and when we were born put into this incarnation um we forgot and that's kind of like the whole journey um of remembrance yeah. of who we really are trusting that knowing once you know who you are you there is no doubt mm -hmm. that you have the answers there is no doubt so finding that is literally a journey within yourself to take down those egotistical, egotistical characters, masks that you put on that you wanted other people to perceive you as mm -hmm. that weren't necessarily who you are. And once you do that, peel those layers and you see and you feel and you know uh, that's where the trust comes from. Mm -hmm. So it's it's interesting what you bring because it, it's a it's another perspective I find really interesting in the sense that sometimes we tend to think that there's tools to trust that we can use techniques to trust, but if and and correct me if I'm wrong, what I gather from what you're saying is that trust is a result. It's a it's the result of a whole process of a whole journey of knowing who you are and not a technique or you know something you apply right. like a sort of a band-aid you put on top of something so again yeah. you go back to the question of the healing which is really at the base of everything we, we talk about all the time it's that healing and and, and and journey that that process of knowing who you really are rather than just you know playing by personas and ego right it's it's extremely important now um, we're being forced into this cleansing period here on earth right now. And you have different aspects of the sun sending its rays down, um, activating those different dormant DNAs within us mm -hmm. that are now causing us to say, Hey, what this doesn't, this isn't right. This doesn't seem right. Or, Oh, this job. No, I shouldn't be here. There's just, you know, um, even changing your molecular you know physics in your in your body mm -hmm. you know you're like oh I can't eat this anymore why does this make me feel sick I've been able to always um even with alcohol alcohol is a huge uh, I used to drink because it was fun you know that was mm -hmm. my consciousness at the time um now I can you know well I actually haven't drink anything in almost two years but should I have taken that drink you can literally feel how it interacts with your frequency mm -hmm. and it will lower it and yeah, you yeah. then don't have control um that's just me anyone else it may be different mm -hmm. and that's okay not saying it's wrong or right it's just how it affects me um different foods um all kinds of different things that affect us and we're like oh you know oh that made my stomach hurt you know so things are changing realizing being more consciously aware of how um different things interact with your energy your body your mind your soul um going through those different layers uh being more aware um yeah. you know it's very important is, right now consciousness is the it's so crucial. I mean, just being, like you say, a form of mindfulness or in everything you are and do, because uh, this this will be the journey, the 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 way to the journey of, of again being able to trust yourself and right. and um, be in contact more with the your inner truth and you know, right. I I was um, divinely guided through a mentor of mine. Um, mm -hmm. I found her online uh it's actually by looking at palmistry it's like well you know well, who am i what why how you know and mm -hmm. i i was like and so i looked up a, a something about the palms and she was i found her video and she was showing you know these little lines underneath your your pinky you know uh noting that you've been a healer in different lifetimes and hmm. it's like wow i said this can't be real i was like well if I was a healer in a lifetime, that means I can heal myself. Mm -hmm. And I was like, there's got to be a way to be able to heal myself. And so started watching a lot of her videos and so much of the information she relayed was 
pure resonance within mm-hmm. my being. I said, okay, this lady was put in my, um, you know, in, in, in my attention because I need to be guided with some of this information and synchronistically again, <laughs> very synchronistically, um, lots of information from, from different uh, healers. Um, but she was basically the one that guided me through, um, a course that she offers called light leaders. And, um, that is basically where I got a lot of this information on how to help guide others through their own healing process. She goes through the different chakras, the different layers of the aura, how they correlate to each other. She uh, goes through um, physiognomy of looking at someone's face and understanding the different characteristics and, and how they think and perceive and, so, I mean, there's so much um, PTSD, different mm-hmm. types of PTSD and how we can help um, through those different traumas and triggers that um, are created through that. That, And also uh, spiritual attachments, how different people can attach to your energy yeah. and suction from you. Um, her second course goes through um, how to trust mm-hmm. the the information you are getting from yourself, um, different channelings of of um, you know through through the angels. Some people like to go through them, and they are very much so around. We can get help from them. We just have to ask. There's a lot of non interference, yeah. and so when we start to ask, we're able to then get. A little bit more guidance mm-hmm. um and also going through a past life healing therapy process um we are learning that as well and that helps some people um deal with different traumas that were created from cellular memory of past lives mm-hmm. so you know we could be dealing with that and and, and from something from this life and so we got to clear it all yep it's got <laughs> got to be cleared we're being forced to do it now on this in this time on this planet but her courses are life changing they've changed my life because mm-hmm. before any of that i was it was debilitating to even be here it was hard to even understand why i was in so much pain mm-hmm. um taking pills for back issues um, taking pills for my mental health because um, I was going through so much anxiety. Mm-hmm. I was able to wean myself off of everything. I have no pain in my back anymore. Yay. <laughs> Gone. Um, you know, understanding when I get little anxious, you know, tingles in my body. I'm like, oh, okay, it's just energy flowing through my body. Mm-hmm. I feel it and I let it go. It does not take over my subconscious mind. I don't, you know, deal with it on a daily basis. It's an understanding. It's a knowing that it's Mm -hmm. just energy running through our body. Yeah. So, you know, it, it was a life changing experience meeting her and, and going through those different courses. And now I'm able to share this information with other people because it is Everyone needs to do it. Yeah. We all have And everybody so can. Also, everybody can do yeah. it. Yeah. And and there's a time because not yeah. everyone's ready to do that. They're Absolutely. still in a different mm-hmm. process within their lives. And when they are ready, they will. They Absolutely. will do it. And um, having guidance to go through it and a better understanding and knowing um, mm-hmm. is so helpful. And well, uh, while we're on the topic of uh, what you do, would you would you be kind to tell us a little bit more about, um, you know, where people can reach you if they wish to perhaps book a session with you or just to exchange with you or if you have a website? And Yes, uh, my website is uh, healingguideinthegarden.com and um, you can see a lot of information uh, of what I offer there um, or you can also email me at healing guide at the garden, uh, healing guide in the garden at gmail.com. 
um, should you have any questions or, you know, um, you want to get a little bit more information on, on what's, what's in, in, in the whole process and, and stuff. Um, so I'm always, you know, available, uh, especially through email. So yeah, if you're ready and, um, uh, want to take the next, next step in a crucial process of, of your life, I, I'm available. Mm, that's wonderful and you're doing a I have to you know say you really are a, a wonderful um, therapist or healer and uh, you you're really good at it and you're it, you do wonderful work out there so I just want to address you know the fact that you know your your life's mission here is uh, you know helping a lot of people so that's really really beautiful I will put uh, the your websites uh, on the in the description below this video uh, before we we you know wrap this up, would you uh, care to have to, or to share with us uh, some last last words or any tips or anything that comes to your mind that that uh, or to your guidance through you that you would like to share with us uh, in terms sure. of helping um, people? Yeah, uh, if you're watching this and you already feel like you've done a lot of this process and you're ready to help others heal. Um, and get a little bit more guidance, I definitely recommend Be Divine Online or Her Light Leaders course. Um, there's so much information there mm -hmm. um, to to go and learn a little bit more and, and get in touch with her. That would be wonderful. Um, but just starting the process, having trust that you have all the answers and not everything out there is scary. It's just how some people, you know, are perceiving it or projecting it out. Um, but just love, be in the frequency of love. Mm -hmm. Some people say it's so corny, but that is what we are. That is who we are. And that is what creates our reality. Yeah. So that's all I can say. Wonderful. Um, I think that's the, ess the essence. Love is the essence. And, uh, um that's where i thank you so very much for your perspective your reflections and your really wisdom that uh is always something that i really enjoy mm -hmm. i thank you so very much for uh offering us an opportunity to to go within to <laughs> to uh receive our own guidance or or and, and trust it so thank you in, in that way you you gave us a, a different angle of perspective even though you are also a therapist like Quentin is but you offered a different perspective so I think it's very complementary and really interesting and uh, very unique in your own way and uh, thank you for being all that you are and all that you do thank in our you. world right now a lot of people um, are in need of uh, some guidance I don't mean necessarily healing in terms of like having someone healing them but just having a little bit of a, a little bit of support to heal themselves and to do that uh, healing journey which is absolutely crucial right now in order not only to receive information from within but also to apprehend our world in, in a more positive and high vibration way and incarnate that love and light that we try to, to do and again to accept and welcome our shadow as well and which is an important balance and so mm -hmm. so again thank you so very much uh thank Desiree. you for having me and uh, take great care of yourself. And perhaps we'll have an opportunity again to talk again at some point. I'll try yes. to do more of these conversations because I think they're very rich and uh, they bring a lot to people. So perhaps if you feel like it, you'll be always welcome in this channel. So. Oh, definitely. I would love to come back. There's so much to talk about. Absolutely. So you're welcome to do so. Take great care of yourself, my dear friend. Thank and you. we talk soon. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. All my gratitude for helping this channel bring positive vibes to more people.